It's January 18, 1919, and with din of World War I finale still ringing in his ears, Woodrow Wilson arrives in France for peace conference at Versailles. General Pershing greets him. And here's Lloyd George of England, big voice in gathering of 70 delegates of 27 nations assembled in Hall of Mirrors. The Palace of Nations nears completion so that those who believe the peoples of the world can live together may have a home where they can plan and work together. And here, arriving at conference hotel quarters, is Wellington Koo for China. And delegate from Poland is famed pianist premier Paderewski. With Paul Hyman's first president, initial meeting is success as delegates Balfour, Fisher, Barnes, and Lord Cecil lead many in voicing opinion that League will keep world at peace. But in 1931, League of Nations deals with first of series of disasters. In the Far East, Japanese soldiers launch their Manchurian invasion, overrunning Chinese strongholds and blasting Chinese cities into submission. China appeals to the League for help, and in fall of 1932, League delegates visit battlegrounds and disputed territory. Then October 2nd, report to League that Japan is fully at fault. But Matsuoka, Japan's leading delegate at Geneva, states his country does not agree with ruling. And Japan not only refuses to abide by League's decision, but walks out of the assembly. Look at the faces around the retiring Japanese. Do they reveal what's coming? The jut-jawed face of this man foretells the future. In defiance of League orders, Benito Mussolini calls for Italian conquest of Ethiopia and return of Italy to the gold and glory of empire. Then one Adolf Schickelgruber leads Germany's Nazi party under swastika symbols and the phony name of Adolf Hitler and defies the League of Nations once again. Now, three great nations have defied the assembly's power and this is what becomes of the gallant League of Nations. Out of the ashes of hopes that are destroyed, new ones arise. In shadow of San Francisco's Golden Gate, with Wilson's dreams of 1919, world leaders of 1945 form the United Nations. Old League of Nations power is handed to new generation. Now names are not Wilson, George, or Clemenceau, but Statinius and Truman of the United States. And there's hope that history will not this time repeat itself, but will improve by the failures past. Weakness wounded the League of Nations that conflict killed, but there is strength in the United Nations.